iOS has a framework called User Notifications that does pretty much exactly what you expect. It lets us create notifications to the user that can be shown on their lock screen. Now we have two types of notifications to work with, and they differ depending on where they were created. We have local notifications, the ones you make locally, and remote notifications, commonly called push notifications, are sent from somewhere else. Remote notifications require a server to work. You send your message to Apple's push notification service called APNS, which then forwards on to users. But local notifications are nice and easy in comparison, so we can send any message at any time as long as the user allows it. To try this out, we're going to start by adding a new import in the top of our contentview.swift file. We're going to say import user notifications. Next, we're going to put in some basic structure that will fill in with all our local notifications code. Using these notifications requires asking the user for permission, then actually registering the notification we want to show. We'll place each of these inside separate buttons in a VStack, so go ahead and put these things in your content view now, here. We'll say there's a VStack, and then we have a button saying request, with a one view you, request permission, and our first code goes there. And then a button saying schedule notification with the second code going there. So that's our setup code complete. Let's turn and focus on the first of our two important pieces of work, requesting authorization to show alerts. Now notifications can take a variety of forms, but the most common thing to do is ask permission to show alerts with badges and sounds. And it doesn't mean we have to use all of them all at the same time. But asking permission up front means we can be selective later on. We then tell iOS what kinds of notifications we want, and it will show a prompt to the user so they have the final say on what our app can actually do. When they make their choice, a closure we provide will get called and tell us whether our request was successful or not. So we can go ahead and replace this comment here first with some new code. We'll say UN user notification sensor dot current dot request authorization this thing here and we're going to give this some options to work with what do we actually want to request so and our option in this case will be i want to show alerts with badges over my icon and sounds and this completion handler this is what's called when the user made a choice and so we'll say, we're given success, did it work or not? Were we given permission or not? And potentially also an error if things went wrong. Now, if success is true, it means everything went to plan. I'll just print out all set. Otherwise, if we had an, a valid error come back, we'll just print it out. We'll say, if let error, print error.localized description like that. Now, if the user grants permission to us, then we are all clear to start scheduling notifications. Even though they might seem simple, Apple breaks them down to three parts to give it maximum flexibility. The content of notification is what should be shown. It can be a title, a subtitle, a sound, an image, and so on. The trigger determines when notification should be shown and can be a number of seconds from now, a date and time in the future, or location, geofencing. And the request combines content and trigger into one, but also adds to it a unique identifier, so you can edit or remove specific alerts later on if you want to. If you don't want to edit or remove stuff, just use a UUID string to get a random identifier. Now, when you're just learning notifications, the easiest type to use for trigger is called a UN time interval notification trigger, which lets request a notification to be shown a certain number of seconds from now, just five or 10 seconds in the future. And so I want to replace this second comment here with some other code. We'll say, firstly, our content is a UN mutable notification content. The content's title will be Feed the Cat. And a subtitle will be It Looks Hungry. We can add a sound here. Dot sound is a UN notification sound dot default so if the user has right now for the default sound that's our content 
Now make our trigger. We'll say our trigger is a UN time interval notification trigger. This will be asked to be displayed five seconds from now, whenever now happens to be, but not repeating, just do it as a one-off. And then we can combine those two into a new request, combine them both together in one place. We'll say our request is a new UN notification request. Our identifier, we don't care here, so it'll be a random UUID is fine. We'll do UUID dot UUID string. Our content is what we made earlier. And our trigger is what we made earlier as well. So now we have everything combined to one object ready to go. Finally, we can add our notification request. Tell iOS, please show this at some point in the future. We say UN user notification sensor dot current dot add that request. Now, if you run the app now, just press Command R, run it back here. You want to press the first button first, okay? Request permission. So we'll do that. And this is the iOS alert. You can see it saying alerts and sounds and badges, just like we asked for. I'll press allow. Yes, you can go ahead and show. You're seeing all set down here, it's worked correctly. And now we can press the second button, schedule notification, okay? Once you do that, you wanna press Command L directly afterwards to lock the virtual device. So I'll press schedule now, and then Command L, lock my device. Count to five or so, hopefully. Boom, feed the cat, it looks hungry. As you can see, the device wakes up, shows our alert, and had that sound as well. Nice.